Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a full face of the oldest makeup products that I have in my collection. I decided to do this video shop my stash style because I knew I wanted to do this video. I had it written down to film sometime this week, but I never got around to actually picking the products beforehand. So I figured instead of taking time to do more planning and pushing off filming this video, I would just shop for the products with you guys on camera. I know you guys like seeing inside of my makeup collection. I know you love shop my stash videos because I do as well. So I shop my stash for the oldest makeup products in my collection. Before we get started, I do just feel like I have to make the disclaimer that I am in no way, shape, or form trying to encourage you guys to use your old and expired makeup. This is solely just for content for my YouTube channel and then I'm going to immediately wash my face right after. I am happy that I hang on to some of these products because I get to use them for videos like this but as I said I'm going to be washing my face right after and of course if anything is like moldy or smells really bad as I'm applying it I'll probably not use it at all but it's just for fun it's just for content I'm not trying to push you guys to use your six or seven year old makeup I hope you enjoy seeing me do a full face of the oldest makeup in my collection and let's go ahead and jump on into the shop my stash portion of this video getting started into shopping my stash for the oldest makeup in my collection. As far as the oldest brow products in my collection, this e.l.f. eyebrow kit is definitely really old, so I'm going to pull this to use as my brow powder. It's even older than my Anastasia brow powder, which is pretty old. So I'm going to pull this one, and I'm going to put all my products in this acrylic organizer up here. Out of all of my brow pencils, the oldest one that I currently have, oh gosh, this is so dark for me. This is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer, and I believe I have this in dark brown which I know is really dark when I had gone through my bad brow phase this is what I was using so this is going to be interesting to use today for my mascara nothing in here is really really old like years and years old because I go through mascara and I declutter them but the oldest one that I do have is this ColourPop BFF mascara. I got this a little bit over a year ago now, so it's probably something that I should have decluttered already, but I guess it's good to have products like this in my collection for when I'm filming videos like this, but do as I say and not as I do and don't use a year old mascara. Moving on to the next drawer, I'm going to pick my oldest bronzer, which I'm kind of thinking might have been the NYC Smooth Skin. I know I've had this in my collection for a really long time and it definitely could be this, but I also don't know if I got my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil before the Smooth Skin. I can't remember. I'm going to pull them both. I'm pretty sure I might have gotten these around the same time. NYC is discontinued. They don't even make this bronzer anymore, but these are definitely huge throwbacks and also the oldest bronzers that I have in my makeup collection. The oldest blush that I have in my collection is definitely this one. This is the Flor Mar. I don't even know if they make this brand anymore. It's their Terracotta Blush on Powder in the shade Golden Peach. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Flor Mar they had a store in my mall for a while and I remember I was trying to find a dupe for MAC Soft and Gentle and this is honestly nothing like MAC Soft and Gentle but I didn't know any better in 10th grade of high school. I believe I was 15 and now I am 22 so that is how old this blush is. As far as the oldest highlighter in my collection, I have a lot of old highlighters because high-end highlighters were one of my first obsessions when I first started getting into makeup. So the oldest one off the top of my head is this Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighter. Do you guys remember these? These were so popular. This is when they were called Illuminators. This is in the shade So Hollywood. It's a really, really golden highlighter. I'm pretty sure this is my oldest highlighter. Just a little shout out to pay homage to a really awesome highlighter because they are closing, which is so sad. I haven't talked about it on my channel yet, but I'm sure you guys know Becca Cosmetics is closing down. Champagne Pop is also another oldie but goodie in my collection. If you guys can see, I use this a ton. Next door down, we have base makeup, foundation, spray, and primer. Now, this part scares me because really old face makeup is obviously not the best for you. I don't have anything that's ancient in here. Everything in this drawer is like 
maybe two years old max. The oldest primer that I have in here is definitely this Maybelline Master Prime Primer. I purchased this a couple years ago looking for a Smashbox dupe and honestly these types of primers aren't my favorite anymore. They're just very like plain, silicone-y and slippery, but I'm going to use this today for the video. My oldest spray is definitely the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 spray. I've had this for a while. I don't really like it, but it's almost empty trying to finish it up. I went through a phase where I was totally obsessed with this stuff. I believe this is my second or third bottle of it, but I don't really love these types of primers anymore. You guys know I love more refreshing sprays like MAC. Oh, my microphone wire got in my drawer. Um, I definitely prefer something like MAC Fix Plus, but we're gonna use this for old time's sake. The oldest foundation that I have in my drawer is definitely one of these two. I don't remember which is older. I wanna say this is 2016 or 2017. I tested out the Makeup Revolution stick in a video. I'm unsure about the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid. I remember having this a while back, but I believe this bottle is a repurchase. I definitely don't think that this is my original bottle of this. That would be really gross if it was, but I'm pretty sure the Makeup Revolution stick is older than the Dream Satin Liquid. Please excuse my eyeshadow drawer is a total mess. This is the one drawer that I didn't reorganize at all in my last reorganization video. I just have stacks and stacks of palettes in here, but my oldest eyeshadow for sure in my whole entire collection is my Naked 2 palette. It's right on top because I talked about this in the 21 questions tag. What is the oldest makeup product in your collection? I believe I got this for my 15th birthday or something like that from my aunt and I remember being so excited getting this. This was my first ever eyeshadow palette and Urban Decay Naked palette. Moving on over to concealers. Ignore all of my sponges are dirty. I need to wash them. But the oldest concealer in my collection is definitely this Maybelline Master Conceal. I've had this for a while. This is such a good dupe for the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and I believe that's why I purchased it in the first place. The oldest powder in my collection is definitely the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and this actually isn't even that old the rest are just mostly recent purchases lastly for lips I believe my oldest lip products are my MAC cosmetics lipsticks these are just so nostalgic I believe last March I actually did the batch code checker on these and these were all manufactured I believe in 2015 so I'm not exactly sure which color I'm gonna use. Diva is like a dark burgundy. This one is in the shade Impassioned. I don't think I'm gonna use this. It's like a super duper neon pink. I have Cream Cup, Cream in Your Coffee. I also have Velvet Teddy and Chili, but those are newer. Those are only like a year old, I wanna say. So I wanna be fair and use one of the really old ones. I'm just not sure what shade I'm going to use yet, but probably Cream in Your Coffee because it's like a standard brown shade. This is like a really melty, messy lipstick. If you guys can see, I don't know what happened to this. It just completely melted one day, but I think this is going to be the most up my alley for now. It's the most nude one that I have out of my oldest MAC lipsticks. I believe my oldest lip liners are my NYX lip liners. I just remember these being some of the first ones that I had purchased. Maybe I could use this one in the shade Earth Tone. I think it'll go nicely with the Cream in Your Coffee lipstick from MAC. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that Shop My Stash portion of today's video. Before we jump on into the application, I wanna say my background is a work in progress. This photo that I usually have here keeps falling, so I just put up a spare photo for now, just resting on my desk. And I just realized that I have lots of eyelashes going on so I hope it looks okay. I'm definitely working on my background and hopefully it'll be better by the time you guys see my next video. As you guys saw, the oldest eyebrow product that I have in my collection is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. This already makes me nervous and I feel like this video is going to be a fail because a lot of the older products that I have in my collection are also products that aren't my style anymore, or maybe that now I would consider a makeup mistake. And I know that this brow stylist definer, I was using this during my bad eyebrow phase, like my sophomore year of college, I wanna say, when I would do super dark block eyebrows, like my 2016 eyebrows.
I didn't fill in the eyebrows all the way because I don't want to make them too dark. I'm hoping I could add some of this e.l.f. brow powder in the shade medium to warm them up a little bit. This has more of like that nice chocolatey brown undertone that I like in my eyebrows. So I'm going to take this powder to hopefully fill in the rest of my eyebrows nicely, a color that I actually like. So far, this eyebrow right here is not too bad. I feel like I could work with this eyebrow. This one on the other hand, I don't know what's happening. It's very patchy. The L'Oreal pencil is very smudgy. And I just feel like I can't get the color evenly distributed throughout my eyebrow. I'm going to leave the eyebrows there for now because I feel like they just keep getting worse. And I wanna say I'm sorry if you knew me in 2016 when my eyebrows were this dark all the time. But now I'm going to go in and prime my eyes with the Maybelline Master Conceal. This is a great concealer. And as I said when I was shopping my stash, this is a really nice dupe for the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is really liquidy right now, as you guys can see. I don't remember it being this liquidy. Oh my gosh, please you guys don't use your old makeup because now I'm getting nervous. I remember this having really great coverage and a nice like lightweight texture. Oh, that coverage is still so good though. I am so excited to jump on into eyeshadow. I have not used my Urban Decay Naked palette in what feels like forever now, you guys. I'm sure you all know what this palette looks like. It is such a classic here on YouTube. These are definitely not the type of colors that I like to use nowadays. These are very, very cool tone. And there's three mattes in this palette. One of them is like a super light banana shade, this taupey shade, and then the black. I feel like I might have a little bit of a hard time creating an eye look with this, but I'm going to jump on into that taupey shade right here. First for the crease, which is called Tease. Still has a nice amount of pigment to it. I used to use this palette seriously every single day. It was my favorite. Okay, wait you guys, the formula is not that bad. I was expecting much worse, but maybe it's like my brushes or just my technique has changed. I'm still taking my time just to build up that same shade because after this, I'd have to jump right down to black. So I'm just making sure this is as built up as I want it before I do go in with the black. I'm not sure if I will. I feel like just to play it safe, I should leave it just at this and do a little bit of a lighter eye look today or maybe I'll do eyeliner like a winged liner with the black instead. I just threw on some e.l.f. Line and Define eye tapes, literal lifesavers for any sort of shadow liner or even normal liquid liner if you guys are beginners. These guides help so much. So I'm going to take the black in here, which is called Blackout. I don't wanna do anything too harsh, especially because my brows I feel are already too dark. So I'm going to do a very light wash of this and then try to smoke it out. I have the black down. I want it to be a little bit more smudgy so I'm just, what is this? This is the Sigma Small Tapered Blending E45. And just kind of like softening it up and smudging it out a little bit. I'm even gonna pick up a little bit more of the first T shade and just kind of go over it a little bit. Maybe I'm too far, if you guys can see. I'm just trying to soften it up here. I just realized I totally just skipped over a lid shade. Wings are something that I would typically do last. But I do wanna put a little something on my lid, nothing very fancy. I don't think I'm going to carve out my lid or anything. But I wanna go into the shade, what is this, Chopper. This is a really gorgeous rose gold shade. And I'm just going to kind of press this on the front of my eye. <laughs> this is so bad. It's definitely there, like you could see something, but it's nowhere near 
as vibrant or as bright as just other eyeshadow formulas are. And I used to think this was so good. It's almost like in this case, the more that I layer it, the more it's coming off. It's almost like it was sticking right to my lid, but it won't stick to itself. Here's the look so far. I just went ahead and peeled off the eye tapes as well as touched up the corners of my eyes with a Q-tip a little to sharpen up the wings. I have to say like, I don't hate the look, but I don't love it either. I think I figured out a long time ago that the Urban Decay shadows weren't up to my standards anymore. And of course, obviously this palette is old, so that could dull down the formula as well, but it's not bad. It's giving me very like 2016 Jackie vibes. I think it's hard to get a look that I like now in my style with something that's so old that I bought when I liked completely different things in eyeshadow. But I also think that's what makes videos like this so fun. So it's definitely not my style. The eyeshadows are a little bit patchy, but it is what it is. Now I'm going to jump on into doing my mascara. I have the ColourPop BFF Mascara. This is about a year old. I am going to be throwing this out right after I am done filming this video. I don't even know if this is going to work, but even when this was a fresh mascara, I didn't really like it that much either. It really doesn't give any length, mostly volume, and that's not my preference when it comes to mascara. So hopefully I could get decent lashes out of this today. Now I'm going to be moving on to my base makeup, which I am nervous about having sensitive skin, kind of putting some of these products on my face. Hopefully I'll be able to wash it off fast enough. As I said, don't use your expired makeup. I'm just doing this for video purposes. So this is the Too Faced Hangover RX 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. That dried up like instantly on my skin. I don't even feel it anymore, but it doesn't have any alcohol in it. I'm gonna do a little more. This dries instantly kind of as it hits the face. I don't know why, but it's definitely not replenishing or hydrating feeling at all. I think this is something I'm going to declutter as well after I'm done filming this video. I just don't like it. I was holding on to it for a video like this, but now that I've used it, I really don't see myself using this anymore. For primer today, I have the Maybelline Master Prime. This is like a blur and pore smoothing type of primer. Really standard, like a silicone, Smashbox dupe, Maybelline baby skin, that type of primer. I really don't have anything against these types of primers. They're just not my favorite anymore. I prefer something a little bit more hydrating and thick like the poreless putty. These are a little bit more thin and slippery on the face, but they do make the skin feel very, very smooth. So I will give it that. I know in the shop, my stash, I was deciding between two different foundations. And from doing some research, I realized that I actually got both of the foundations that I was deciding between around the same time, both the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid and the Makeup Revolution London Foundation Stick. I got these both in 2018. I know I really, really like the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid liquid and I've used it more often on my channel. So I'm going to go in with the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick. I just don't really love stick foundations too much. They're a little bit thick and heavy feeling on the face, but I'm going to try to use a little bit less than I normally would and kind of spread it out. So this is in the shade F6, if you guys were wondering. I remember this having really great coverage and it's giving me, yeah, pretty nice coverage so far. It feels a little tiny bit heavy on the skin, but I'm just trying to use it pretty sparingly. I wanted to just do one side of my face first so you guys can see the difference and you can see the coverage. This definitely does give me nice full coverage as I'm sure you guys can see compared to the side of my face. It's slightly cakey looking on the skin. Honestly, you probably could use even less that I'm using right now, but I feel like it's kind of drying quickly, so then I have to keep adding more, if that makes sense. But look at the coverage on this. So here's the foundation. I know I desperately need some concealer today with 
this eyeshadow and these eyebrows. I definitely need something around there to kind of brighten up my eyes. But the foundation is not bad at all. I think it looks really nice. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's just very matte on the skin, very like full coverage. You can tell that this would cover acne. You could tell that this would block any oil that tried to seep through. This was totally what I like to use back in like 2016 through 2018. It's not bad. I think it looks nice, especially like from far away on camera. It's just not my personal cup of tea anymore. I like something definitely still full coverage, but just a little bit more light and dewy on the skin. Time to go in for concealer again. I'm going to use the Maybelline Master Conceal. As I mentioned earlier, the same one that I used to prime my eyes. Oh, if I didn't mention earlier, I wear this in the shade 20 Light. Now I'm just going to go ahead and set it with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I used to pack this stuff on my face when I was more oily, but now I like to take it on my sponge, kind of tap it on the back of my hand first to get off that excess powder and then go in and set the area that I want to set. Going back into the Urban Decay Naked Palette, I don't know why, I just like don't wanna put that same tea shade under my eye. I feel like it's just too cool tone. It's a little bit purple. I feel like it's giving me like slightly bruising look because it has such a strong cool tone purple undertone. So I don't wanna take it under my eye. So I'm thinking I'm gonna just take that same chopper shade that I put on my lid, like the sparkly rose gold, and just see how that looks under the eye. Two bronzes skin now. I know when I was shopping my stash, I picked out both the NYC Sunny Bronzer as well as the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Keeping it so real with you guys, I have absolutely no idea which one of these is older. I know these are definitely the two oldest bronzers that I have, but I don't know which is older, but I'm going to go for the NYC today just because it's a little bit more warm tone, definitely closer to my current bronzer style compared to the Chocolate Soleil is very, very cool tone in comparison. And that could kind of tend to really bring down the face. So I'm just going to bronze with the NYC bronzer. This is definitely a brand that I wish that they would bring back. Their stuff was so good. I loved their liquid eyeliner with the brush. They had one of the best liquid liners and it was so affordable. I genuinely feel like there's nothing a good bronzer can't fix. I was really not liking this look at all, but now that I have bronzer on, now that I did my nose contour, I feel a little bit better. Like it just brought some more life back into my face with all of these dark tones on my eyes. Dark and cool tones, which if you guys didn't know are my enemies when it comes to my makeup. And again, for my blush, I have the Flormar blush. I don't know why I ever thought this was similar to Soft and Gentle. It's literally so peachy, but I didn't really know how to dupe things when I was 15 years old. Oh wow, this still has a lot of pigment to it. I love peachy blushes and this is so nice. It has a nice, I don't know if it's picking up on camera, like a little sheen to it. Now for the face, we just need to add some glow. I have the Anastasia So Hollywood Illuminator. I'm pretty sure they discontinued these like two years ago now, but this was one of my first high-end highlighters. As you guys can see, I've used so much of this. This was popular back when highlighter was first kind of becoming a thing. The Anastasia formula has changed so much. Just comparing this like in my head to Amreezy, their new highlighters are so much smoother. This was definitely I don't know if you guys can see more of a chunky glittery highlighter formula. Now that my base makeup is done, I'm going to go in with one last spritz of the Too Faced Hangover Spray before I toss it. <laughs> I don't really want this in my collection anymore, honestly. Last for my lips, I'm going to be using the NYX Lip Liners. I know in my shop, my stash, I picked out the brown shade, but I might try to mix it with the pinky shade just to try to get a little bit of a deeper nude. That's Nude Pink from NYX, now I'm going in with Earth. I think that worked. I was trying to go for like a little bit of a deeper nude, kind of like a brownie pink, 
And originally I had pulled cream in your coffee, but I think this is just going to be, I don't know, like too warm. Okay, no, this is definitely not. I'm wiping this off. I don't know if this is considered cheating. I am going to use another MAC lipstick that I have. This one is just not as old, and this is in the shade Velvet Teddy. I know this is a shade that I like. I know that this is going to work with this eye look, hopefully. Oh, so much better already. I realized I didn't pick out a lip gloss in the shop my stash, so I'm going to top it off with the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Fortune Cookie. I've had this for a couple years, and I know this is actually starting to make a comeback, this very pale nude gloss. But I just wanna lighten it up a little bit, so I'm gonna use it on top of this lipstick. All right, you guys, so that is going to complete this video. Here is my finished look that I created using a full face of the oldest makeup products in my collection. As I'm sure you guys can probably tell as we went along this video, it's definitely not my favorite look. I just think, as I said, the products that are the oldest in my collection are also the oldest in like style and color and what I used to like. So this whole look is just so far from the makeup that I typically do day to day and I just don't really like it too much and it was just hard to kind of match the colors of all of these like everything is so cool tone but the oldest blush in my collection is this like bright peachy shade so it was kind of hard to coordinate the look in that way and I think that's why I don't 100% love it either but I think how the makeup looks and the end result is the least important thing in this video I overall think it was still really fun I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this video and spending time with me today if you did please make sure to give this video a thumbs up it really helps me out also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos click that notification bell down below and you'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video as always thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye guys